Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Luis de Berspedia. I serve as chair of the Historic Districts Commission in Concord. Welcome to the November 22nd, 2002 meeting of the Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission. The commission will review three new applications this evening and at the end will conduct other business. We're conducting this meeting online in accordance to, with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The public may access this call through both telephone and video conferencing. Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and provide public comments on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission. To do so, please raise your hand in the participant function of the Zoom meeting platform. If you're calling in and cannot use the platform, you may raise your hand by dialing star nine. Our host will mute microphones of those not uh, speaking to preserve bandwidth and may need to turn off video except for the commissioners, the host, and the current applicant. I will call on each commissioner for comments on an application and then open the meeting for public comment. Once there are no more public comments, I will ask for a motion from the commission to continue to approve, to approve with conditions or to reject. A second and conduct a roll call vote. Once the commission has acted on an application, the applicant is free to leave the meeting. We will now do a roll call of the members of the commission, uh, which is uh, Dennis Fiore. Here. Abigail Flanagan. Here. Henry Moss. Here. Peter Nobili. I'm here. Melinda Shumway. Here. Uh, I am here as well, and the voting members uh, will be. Oh, Paul, where is here as well? Paul, where are you here? <laughs> can, can you hear me, Paul? You are muted. I just need to hear it. Yes, evidently I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so voting members will be uh, if the, five, the five full members of the commission, uh, uh, Paul, Melinda, Peter, Abigail, and myself. Um, we have three new public hearings. Uh, the first one is uh, Justin Fernandez of 13 River Street uh, to replace gutters. Is the applicant here? Yes, I'm here along with uh, Matthew D'Agostino. Perfect. You want to go ahead and give us a quick presentation of uh, what are you planning to do? Uh, yeah, so I can speak for that. Uh, Matt D'Agostino here with GF Sprague. Um, the plan is to remove a composite gutter uh, and replace it with a 5K style aluminum gutter. Okay, do we have any plans or any material uh, that we can look at? Um, Haley? Yep, one moment. Sure. Let me just share my screen here. Can everybody see that? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay, and where would these gutters be going? Uh, in the whole area of the house or, okay. Yeah, so the gutters will be on all eaves of the home. Okay, and uh, are these gutters the same material as, as uh, the ones that are there before, or are these kind of replacement in kind, or are these new gutters? These will be new gutters, similar profile, different material. Okay. And what is the material? <laughs> Materials aluminum. Aluminum. Okay. And the Correct. current gutters are also made of aluminum? The current gutters are composite. Okay. So you're switching to aluminum. Do we have a specs for the gutters? We do. And I assume that they will be white. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay. All right, this looks like a fairly straightforward uh, presentation. So I'll ask for comments from members of the commission. Uh, Dennis? 
Uh, I have no problem with this. Hey, Abigail? No objection. Hey, Henry? No objection. I thought the application said wood gutter currently. Uh, is what it? is composite? Yeah. It is the composite currently. What is composite? It's just a compact, it's like a PVC, compact PVC board. Uh, I see. So they aren't wood gutters. Okay. Correct. I have no objection. Uh, Peter. Looks good to me. Melinda. Looks like you're upgrading to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> positive to aluminum. Uh, I think it's fine. Okay. Thank you, uh, Paul. Yeah. Um, not to delay it, but what what is what's the strategy of changing from composite to uh, essentially metal to aluminum? I, I'm not a fan of aluminum gutters in general, but is that an upgrade or is it a downgrade? Well, in my professional opinion, based on the condition of the existing composite gutters, it's definitely an upgrade. Uh, there has been historic, uh, historically issues with composite gutters, cracking at the seams, unable to properly seal them. When they get cold, they can you know, contract and uh, expand and contract it. It can create issues and leaks around the home. The aluminum gutters are much more durable uh, material in that aspect and they're a lot easier to seal. Um, are, forgive my ignorance, but are these visible from the street, the aluminum gutters? Correct. In the front of the house, correct. Yeah. Um, I, I'm surprised we so readily uh, adopt aluminum gutters, but... Um, you know, I wouldn't stand in the way of this, but I, I, I question it. I, out of ignorance, really. Hey, I mean, thank you. Would uh -huh. composite gutter last twenty years? Well, this one has not. This one, this system has already failed. After what? Nine months, nine and a half years, 19 years. Uh, yeah, I believe it was less than 10 years. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, I have no objection. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, I probably have the same uh, questions as uh, uh, Paul, but I don't think it's uh, something that is substantive. Uh, so I don't have any objections. Uh, are there any comments from the public? Okay, if there are no, no comments uh, from uh, the public, I will ask uh, the commission for a motion to uh, approve, approve with conditions, uh, reject or continue. I'll move that we approve the application for gutter replacement work at 13 River Street uh, as presented. Second. Second. Okay, I'm gonna ask the full, the full members uh, for a vote. Abigail? Aye. Peter? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I am an I as well, uh, yes as well. So thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, have a good night. Have a good Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, same to you. Okay, the next uh, application is uh, Robert de Oliveira to uh, 222, uh, sorry, 222 Barrett's Mill Road, uh, the Barry Farm Historic District to remove and replace asphalt roof shingles, clapboard siding, exterior trim, exterior doors, and windows. Uh, is uh, the applicant here? Yes, John yes. Masubian and um, the homeowner Roberto is also here. Okay, very good. Well, if you want to go ahead and uh, show us what are your plans. Um, Haley, did you have everything I sent to you? Everything is yep. on the website. I did see it. Yeah. Uh, okay. One moment. <clears throat> so while she's getting that up, I can speak to this a little bit. Roberto, please um, jump in if you'd like. 
Mm -hmm. But um, this is an outbuilding on the property. Uh, and the this this particular building was built in the 60s uh, and is uh, pretty deteriorated. And so the homeowner would like to make this. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so on in the back, yeah. Yes, correct. So the homeowner would like to make this into a home office and completely refurbish it, which is what we've applied to do with the building department. So uh, in summary, uh, speaking to the exterior of this structure, um, the roof is existing asphalt roof shingles. We are proposing to install new certainty landmark architectural 30 year roof shingles. The siding is existing red painted cedar clapwood siding and we are proposing to install new primed cvg red cedar clapwood siding and paint with the same red color the exterior trim is uh, rotted so we would replace all of that as well i put in the application primed pine i would love the opportunity to use pvc on this building if we could and that would get painted with the same red color the exterior doors there are two those are six panel wood, which are rotted. And we are proposing using six panel fiberglass exterior doors uh, with the same size trim um, and painting those in the same colors. The windows we would uh, replace, we are proposing replacing the six over six white wood windows with um, Marvin Elevate series white clad six over six windows and we would install the same trim around them that exists on the uh, windows so that's uh, that radius window by the way that you see that would get refurbished we would not replace that that would stay right. as is um, so we would refurbish that and uh, and then paint it and that that's pretty much the the summary of uh, what we'd like to do on the exterior of this building. Mm -hmm. um, I did take a number of pictures, uh, which, you know, there was one that I took from the street. It's, um, yeah, it's number four, I think. Yeah, these are close up shots because I wanted to give the board, yeah, that's that's from the street looking back. Um, so so the house is actually there. Right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And then I took a picture from each of the four areas as well, um, from the from the right side property line, and then from the rear property line. And I think I got one from the left side as well. I'm not not completely certain of that, but my understanding is there's some type of uh, conservation commission property that uh, is on the right and rear of this property. Mm -hmm. Is that public? Is that for public use? Like people are allowed to walk back there? In the back, there's field to the right uh, of this photo is just forest. Um, and to the left, it's also the field. Okay. But it's public, yeah. We're surrounded on all four sides of the property by public land. Okay. So, Roberto, I didn't know if you had anything that you wanted to add to what I explained to the board. No, I think it's pretty clear. The structure is from the 60s. It's in terrible condition. It has not been maintained in quite a while. It's falling apart and we would like to, uh, we still don't know if it's gonna be uh, our office or the art studio for our daughters, going back to the original scope of the house, but definitely we wanna bring it back to uh, bring it back to life. Yep, that's from the rear property line, that yep. shot. That's <clears throat> in the back. Mm -hmm. And that's from the right side property line. Mm -hmm. So the east side of the property. And this is north side. Of, oh, south side. We're standing at our property here. Hmm. Thank you, Roberto. Yeah, of course. OK, thank you very much. Um, just to clarify, where is that uh, you want to put PVC? You want to substitute the whole thing by for PVC or something? Uh, just the trim, uh, just to get uh, a little bit more resilience to the ele to to the elements down here. Yeah, we we would propose using a high quality uh, PVC trim, not not the cheap stuff, but either uh, we typically use either Azec or Versatex, and once it's painted, you can't you can't tell the difference. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to ask the commissioners for comments. Uh, Dennis? Hmm. Are there two, a quick question. I go by this site. Well, today I went by it three times. Are there, okay. <laughs> are there two red buildings there or just one? Yes, there's two. There's uh, This one is finished. The other one is a uh, an unfinished shed that eventually I'll, I'll work in the future on it. But we're focusing on this one at the moment. So this is the one you see if you look up your driveway right there at the end uh, of the driveway. In winter, yes, exactly. OK. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I've never noticed the darn building, but anyway, um, <laughs> but I gather it's I gather it's there. Um, yes, I don't really have any questions. Uh, uh, it's a '60s building. Um, we have been um, uh, approving uh, uh, changes with materials that are not wood, um, and I don't have a problem with what you're planning to do. Awesome. Thank any you. Any comments? Thank you. And thank you, Dennis. Uh, Abigail? Um, I don't have any objection to the changes proposed. I just had a couple of questions for clarification. Mm -hmm. um, are you adding any exterior lighting, given that it's kind of set back from the house if you're planning on using it more yeah. frequently? Not at the moment. Um, down the road, we might add an exterior deck in front of the other side of this uh, photo. And if we do that, I would like to have a pergola and lighting. But at the moment, we're focusing on Keeping okay, okay. the body so of the house and interior. Yeah, so you'd come back if there was any. Of course. Yeah. Um, the other question: Are you doing? Is there a bathroom in this at all? There is. Yes. It's okay. A um, very small bathroom. I see the one vent stack. Are you adding any more venting? Changing no. venting? No. No. Um, no I'm just bringing it back to condition. Okay. Um, and will there be any heating or cooling? The reason I ask is like, is there any condensers or equipment? Uh, or anything split. we're gonna add a mini split for it to keep humidity out in winter in summer okay uh yeah. where's the mini split going to be located uh in the back so the right side of this photo okay so we would need all the information on where that would be placed um if it's on a concrete pad how tall is it all of that kind of information so any exterior change um that would include anything any kind of mechanicals or anything like that um so you'd want to um submit that information. Um, um, I guess that's a quick, John, are we going to have any um, equipment outside or is it going to be on the, in, in the wall? Well, it'll be in, it, it'll be on the wall inside the head of the unit and the heat pump part of it would be outside. Uh, and it's a, it's a pretty small heat pump. It's a pretty small building, but we could certainly um, get the specs on it to the, to the board. Is there is there a side of this building that would be preferable? I mean, I think the the I think our preference usually is like least visible. Yeah. I know that's not particularly helpful given that you've got four sides, but wherever it's going to be the least obtrusive, okay. Um, okay. if there's an option to place it there, um, sometimes you're constrained simply by where you have to place the interior unit, where the exterior unit's going to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we we'd want that submitted with. Uh, to Haley would be the exact location, this the exact unit, what it's going to look like, all of that. So, um, and when it gets submitted, do we need to come back in front of this board, or is that a separate approval? That would be up to the board whether this could be something that you add um, administratively. I'm not quite sure. Um, okay. I don't think it's a significant. I don't think it's a significant issue, but those little details kind of all need to be, it's things like a lot of times people be like, we're replacing it in kind, same color. It's like, okay, well, we need the paint chip and that can be submitted kind of after the fact. So, but that's my general yeah. comments on it. I don't have an objection to the changes being made. I just awesome. want to make sure that any exterior changes are, are noted. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, thank you, Abigail. Uh, Henry. Oh, you're muted, Henry. Thank you. I don't have any objections. I, I think the uh, color of the building is very good. And I wonder why you don't do that same color over that bow window. I, it would make it, it even more coherent. This is the way we uh, inherited the structure. I'm, I'm keeping it as is for the moment. Eventually in the future, if it, uh, we'll consider it. Yeah, for the moment, I, li I like it the way it is with all the white windows. I'm not objecting. Thank you, Henry. Uh, Peter. 
Yeah, I would also say I, I have no objections. I, I have a suggestion on the first photo, I think, in the photo series here. Um, yes. It looks like there's an ad, a louver in the attic or something, yeah. and then down lower. Is that a like a vent on the side for a, for like a heating a, unit? Yes. See that if that heating unit goes away, that might be the kind of place for the split system component. That's the wall we're considering. You're right. So, and I I know you usually can't paint those those things. So maybe uh, we have to figure out some way to screen it a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I the kind of thing I, I think. Either. Yeah, those those. As as Luis would tell us, God is in the details. That that's the kind of thing we love to see. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's 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 very sweet. I, my question was, what was done in the hobby room by the original hobbyists? Do we know? Did they? She well, she, she made. Um, she had some uh, sewing textiles and mm -hmm. uh, looming. Yes, we kept a couple of uh, uh, of pieces here in the house. We bought the house uh last year we moved in six months ago you see the it's the white structure in the back it is a historic home uh this one we're keeping as is and we're preserving it as a we'll come back in front of this commission a couple of times probably when we're replacing a couple of windows that are falling apart mm -hmm. but this one we're really taking care and we're not touching it and the nice. previous owner lived here for 90 years she was wow. a member of uh, the entire street everyone that knew her very well all right, thank you. I have no further comment. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, Melinda? Um, I can't add anything in addition, but I, I do think it's charming, and um, I'm sure it'll be great when you're finished with this project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melinda. Uh, Paul? Uh, Roberto, you talked about red shingles. Now, were you talking about red cedar that is painted or white cedar that is painted red? Uh, not shingles, uh, if I could correct. The, right now, it's currently cedar clapboard. So oh, okay. we're actually okay. talking about prime CVG cedar clapboard painted oh, red. Okay. Red. And with respect to the possibility of you using ASIC along, you're talking about using that only along the base where, you, you know, in the splash zone, so to speak, from the ground well, up. I, I would propose to use it everywhere, and and once it's painted, you can't tell the difference between the PVC trim and and the wood trim, and it will it will give Roberto a lot of longevity as far as not not have yeah. you know less yeah. maintenance on the building. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm quite familiar with Azac, having used it myself. But so yeah. I'd I'd personally be in favor of that. Um, I think it's a good idea as opposed to just not a bad idea because um, you know it's it's very sustainable and enduring but i don't know how others feel is that part of the application to use azac i i put in primed pine and um i we would like to use pvc okay i don't understand the answer is well that... I, I in other words i i think i had put in the application primed pine but we would we would like to we are requesting to use pvc okay well from a personal point of view to whatever extent um azec can be substituted i think that's a sensible substitution uh that would not detract from the you know the historic look of the of the building so i'd be in favor of that if it's part of the application no other comments Thank you very much, Paul. Um, I don't have any uh, substantial comments. Uh, I would like to uh, clarify that uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, receiving the formal application, we will want to have every single exterior detail uh, fairly well uh, ex explained uh, in a plan or, or a drawing that we receive. So if you are not certain about the location of a, a, the lo the location of a heat pump, or a similar structure, it's very likely that it can be approved administratively. But uh, the important thing is that the final plans that remain with the commission uh, reflect uh, exactly what, what is built. And the same thing applies to uh, chip paint colors and uh, to uh, materials uh, that are used in the, in the exterior part of the structure. 
So I'm going to ask uh, for public comments. Okay, if there are no public comments, I will ask uh, the commissioners uh, for uh, a motion. I'll uh, I'll move that we approve the <clears throat> proposed work at 222 Barrett's Mill Road as presented uh, to remove and replace asphalt roof shingles, clabbered siding, exterior trim, exterior doors and windows on an outbuilding with a couple of uh, comments, including uh, that the trim will be PVC and not painted wood, that any changes will be submitted to the HTC for administrative review and in theory approval. Um, and did I miss anything else? That's my motion. <laughs> Sounds good. That was good. a second. Second. Okay, so I'll uh, uh, ask uh, the, mem the voting members of the commission for a vote. Uh, Abigail? Aye. Peter? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? I don't really hear. Do we don't hear Paul? <laughs> okay. Did I don't you say yeah. I don't think I'm muted, but yes. Okay, now you're all right. Something happened, and I'm an I as well. So the application is approved. Congratulations, and we look forward to receiving the remaining material and seeing the completed project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Um, will you let the building department know, or do I let them know? Uh, it's it's now you're good to go. It'll this will go through to the building department, and you're but you're essentially approved tonight. Terrific. Awesome. Thank you so thank much, you. everybody. Have a good Thanksgiving. You're welcome. Thank you, you thank too. You. The next, the next application is a uh, die climber from uh, 1322 Main Street, the Concord Free Public Library, the Church Street Historic District to construct a wooden barrier along the right side parking area. Yeah, I, I see John, I see Dai there. We've got a moving screen behind me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very, well, welcome if you want to. I'm representing the uh, library and we would like to have a wooden barrier um, at the side of the parking lot at the Fowler Library. I, I hope you saw the information that I sent, but we've had a few accidents um, with people running through the um, curb stops and uh, going right into the fence. Uh, this has happened four times and the neighbors have been very cooperative and replaced the fence, but they have young children now and very concerned about their young children getting hit <laughs> when this th kind of thing occurs. So we thought a very simple wooden barrier would be a good additional obstacle to have there. And um, I've given you the dimensions of this low structure. It would be wood. Uh, would be behind uh, the six parking spaces there. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> any, any other information we should know about? Why are there so many bad drivers in Concord? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you mean they drive over that concrete into the fence? Yeah, I'm afraid. Well, <laughs> well I'm, I'm going to call the members of the commission to order <laughs> and, and ask for um, orderly comments. Dennis, go ahead. <laughs> I think it's fine if, if people are driving over the concrete. And Peggy doesn't even use that branch. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of it if they, if it, they feel a necessity to save the fence and the kids on the other side. It's a safety issue. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Abigail? Um, I have no objection to the design. Do we, and I'd ask our architect friends, um, do we think this is going to be sufficient enough to stop a vehicle from going through this and then onto the fence? I guess that's my only question is, 
I think aesthetically the, the barrier is fine. I think safety wise, the barrier is necessary. I just want to make sure that it's a barrier that will actually um, perform the task required. Um, not, given, not, your, the, not your SUV, not your SUV, Abby. Yeah, yeah, not my my car. That's not stopping my car, and that's my concern. Is it's to be frank, it's it's a it's a child centric branch, um, and a lot of us drive enormous SUVs, and I'm just wondering if that's going to actually stop a big. But I have no technical opinion on that. That's my only concern. But I have no objection design wise. The uh, vertical posts uh, are going to be set in uh, twelve inches of sonar tubes with concrete, so it should be very stable. Okay, great. Thank you, Abby. Uh, Henry? Um, I think it will be, it'll be fine for 20 years or so. And, um, and that Daya is absolutely right to get this thing built. Thank you, Henry. Uh, Peter? Yeah, Daya, that was uh, my only question was, did I, I guess as a follow up, did a, I don't know, a traffic engineer or somebody look at this in terms of like resistance to, I mean, it, was it designed with a particular force in mind to resist or, or? I don't, I don't know the technicalities about that, but you can see something that is just like this in the parking lot right behind the Middlesex Bank and the Visitor Center in, um, in Concord Center. And oh, yeah. In the same position, right it's behind the, the curb, stops. Okay. It's it's just a, an extra wake up call and something more visual than the than the curb stops. Yeah, I, I think it's great. I I just I'm, I just don't want you to have to do it again. You know, if somebody somebody <laughs> like Abby comes in and knocks it over, and you have to. Go <laughs> no, I think it. I think it. It'll, I hope it works really well. So, go go go. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, Melinda? I think it's a great idea, and I do think that the visual will will cut down dramatically. Uh, I, I go sometimes over, if you're not that tall, it's hard to see the concrete blocks, and I have problems with this in some parking lots, so I think this is a wonderful idea. Uh, thank you very much, Melinda. Paul? I have no further comments. I'm, I'm all in favor. Thank you, Paul. And uh, I have no comments either. Uh, so I will ask for public comments. Are there any public comments? <clears throat> in the absence of uh, public comments, I will ask the voting members of the commission for a vote. Abigail? We need oh, wait, I have, to, I have to move first. Oh, move. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just move running. Again. I'm so happy. Oh, Please, can I, may I have a motion? May I have a motion? I, I, shall I make it or do you want to make it or I'll make it. So I'll move that we uh, approve the work at 1322 Main Street, the Fowler Library branch to install a wooden barrier as presented. Second. Okay, now we can have a vote. <laughs> uh, Abigail. Aye. Uh, Peter. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Paul. Aye. And I'm an I as well. So thanks very much for coming and congratulations. Thanks for putting it up. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are uh, now going to the other business discussion. The first uh, uh, part of the discussion is going to be 70 Monument Square. Uh, the certificate of approval 1932 uh, with uh, some changes. And I think that uh, uh, he disappeared. Where's Mark? Right here. I'm right oh, there here. you are. There you are. Hi, Mark. Good evening. So anyways, well, I'm actually doing two Zooms. I'm on the planning board and having a meeting today as well. So <laughs> I'll kind of make this brief if that's okay. You know, obviously this was a huge project. We tried to keep on top of it to make sure that you folks were aware of any changes that we thought were, you know, change the complexion of the building. Um, we met every Wednesday to go over it. 
Um, one of the things that did get changed was the side of the driveway on the south side of the building. Okay. Um, we had originally planned to have more grass. You can't see that, but right next to it, there was going to be a little bit of grass area there. We were going to do some planting, but we discovered that the foundation came out further than we thought. So there really wasn't space there to put plantings in. So we did some um, um, brick veneer on the part that you can see there. And then we had some large stones, um, granite blocks that came out of the foundation that we put along there, as you can see it where the old porch was. I know I can't point to it very well, but I don't know if you can envision that. So that's, so there is no stone veneer there. There is large granite blocks that were part of the foundation that we placed there in place of the stone veneer. That's it right there. You can see them. Okay. And that was the change that we made that we probably should have come to you folks before we did it. But again, in the heat of the moment, it was done. So I hope that you find that accepted. That's my story. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Isn't, isn't this anything to do with the stones that were part of the prison where Thoreau was once before and things like that? Or is this a different one? Ask me that again, Luis. Is this, are these part of the stones that were part of the foundation? That's correct. Our... Yes, they were taken. Yes. Can't you see where, you know, Henry David Thoreau was locked up there overnight? Can't you see his initials carved in that granite right there? <laughs> no, if you if you say that, I'm going to take it seriously. So say it or don't say it. <laughs> well, because as, as you know, this was part of the original Concord Jail. Okay. So because the the sheriff lived above it and the jail was down below it. And that's where those stones came from. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, uh, the members of the commission for comments. Uh, Dennis? I'm just curious. Um, so just to clarify, because this has been a long process and I've not been involved in, in a lot five, of it. Five, it's been five years, yep. Um, so you were going to put stone facing along that side of, of the foundation, correct? What we had hoped to do, Dennis, was to have a little garden grass area there with plantings. And then we were going to have, we were going to carry the stone veneers, the stone veneer over the back side of it. We were going to carry that along the foundation. Okay. But there really wasn't room enough for, um, you know, garden or grass or anything there. It wouldn't have survived. So instead, we put these stones in in place of that. Um, okay, I'm, I'm still not clear, but there's still room to put the stone veneer along the concrete base, right? Well, you really can't, it doesn't show it very well because it, you can't see that foundation, okay? Um, there was no plan to put stone veneer on the front part of that. That wasn't part of the plan. We put stone veneer on the back side of it. And okay. in place of that little area where the porch was, where the foundation stuck out, we couldn't get rid of that step. There used to be a door there. And, and our contractor said that we couldn't remove that part of it. So we really wouldn't have been able to put stone veneer there anyways. Can you see that? I, I do. So, um, okay. so it really precluded us from doing what we had originally thought we could do. So you thought the plantings would cover the foundation is what you're That's saying? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And, and, and we, just, and we can go back and do that if, if that's acceptable, but I don't think they do very well there. There, there isn't enough space there. Okay. It's, probably tr it's probably true. Why didn't you put the stones up against the, si the, the foundation to, uh, to create sort of a stone look again along the foundation rather well, than putting it out? I, I don't think it really, sh when you look at this, you really <laughs> don't see that separation. It's, it's cheat by jowl with it really, okay? Um, I don't think if you went and looked at it, Dennis, you would see that there's a separation there. You don't notice that. No, well, I was looking. I was looking at it today. I, I don't find it objectionable the way it is. I'm just curious about right. Um, well, why the, things weren't the done. real reason. There were a couple of reasons. One is we couldn't get rid of that step, so we really couldn't have put stone veneer there. And we had these great granite blocks that we thought we could utilize along the side of the drive. <laughs> okay, I don't have any other questions. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, uh, Abigail. Um, I don't have any concerns about the granite blocks from like the what used to be a door on back. 
but from the what used to be a door forward where the no parking fire lane sign is and where the gutter is and and the corner is feels like there is still an opportunity there to plant something to soften that it's a little bit orphaned now um it's kind of more visible um so my only my only thought was if if it's possible to plant something there and tie the landscaping from the front around that corner that might soften kind of the kind of um the kind of yeah i mean we that. could we could try that abby but i don't know that there's room enough there really to do it okay but so i can talk to our, yeah i think it's one of those things that i wouldn't make it necessarily condition but i think it's yeah i think I'd it's be happy worth to, a shot you know, throwing we, something we, in there we've worked really hard to make the place look nice okay yeah. and we're not adverse to doing whatever else we can do to make it look prettier yeah okay. i mean i think tying the landscaping around that corner and yep. then having those granite stones right. kind of end into it um i think would would improve that that facade so that's exactly. my that's my only suggestion I'll, I'll talk to the guy that's doing the uh, you know landscape okay hey, thank you abby hey, henry I'm glad that the granite blocks are visible and that occasionally someone will learn that they were part of an earlier building on the site. Mm -hmm. And I would leave it at that. Thank you, Henry. Uh, Peter? I'll just second what Henry said. I think I think it's it's kind of neat. So nice work. Uh, Melinda. To me, it's sort of making do with what you have. And um and that's what you have. <laughs> so uh, I think it's okay. It wouldn't be my first choice, but I think it's fine. Yeah, thank you, Melinda. Paul? To, uh, just to follow up on Abby's point, which uh, in principle I share, uh, what is the width of the pavement? Is there room there to uh, cut part of the pavement and... No. Well, and there require isn't, the garden is that a minimum width? And yes, width? it is. Well, it's, re it's required to be a certain width. To yeah, allow, fire uh, trucks, fire and, trucks, and stuff yeah. like that to get down. And and you're at the minimum essentially. That's correct. Yeah, okay. we actually I, had to we had to expand it from where it was. That was part of it. Took up more space because of that. Okay. Yeah, I do remember that. Okay, I, I have no other comments. Hey, thank you, Paul. Um, I have no comments except to echo Abigail and Paul in terms of uh, adding more vegetation uh, to the area. But, uh, you know, this is something that would be nice to have. It's certainly not a requirement. Uh, this is not a formal application, but a modification of one that was previously approved. Uh, so we don't need to ask for public comments. But if there is anybody from the public that wants to make a comment, this is the opportunity. And if there are no public comments, then I will ask uh, the voting member, the, the commission to for a for a motion to approve uh, the says uh, uh, change in the certificate of approval okay. of appropriateness. I move, I move that we uh, approve the change order as proposed with respect to the granite blocks. Second. Okay, I'm gonna go through, through the voting members, Abigail. Aye. Uh, Peter? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I'm an I as well. Okay. Oh. Thank, thank you very much. Mark. Mark, nice to see nice you to all see again. You. And I, I will talk to our landscape guy about maybe prettying that up a little bit. Okay. So, Thanks, right? Mark. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Mark. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. All right, so the next point is uh, um, Haley. Is uh, Melissa Southfield here? Yes, she is. It is my great pleasure to welcome uh, Melissa Southfield, the chair of the Historic Commission. Well, thank um, you. She, uh, the subject that she's going to be discussing is the Preservation Awards presentation, which is something that we participated in previous years and that we are, there are several structures in Concord which uh, we pro promoted and they were they, they were they won the award so we are very proud of it so melissa welcome <laughs> thank you so thank you i'm really just here to plug these awards uh which we tried to do a couple years ago but because of covid and 
rest of everybody else's life was disrupted, but so are our preservation awards. So we are absolutely going to host these in, on May 18th, it is, um, at the townhouse next spring. Um, and we had an announcement put out in the Concord Bridge last week. We'll probably do that in another few weeks and um, maybe another time. Um, we are looking for nominations and because probably many of the um, projects would come before you, we are asking you folks to think about projects that you have seen over the last three years. So it's it's anything was done between 2019 and 2022, completed in those years. Exterior only. Um, uh, the nominations are due by February 28th of 2023. Uh, and then we have a committee that will be um, evaluating them and they consist of, um, um, all of a sudden I'm having a, I'm having a mental block. Peter Nobley is one of our members. Ryan Hanley is one of our members. And, and, and um, why am I having, I can't remember Anne's name. She's the chair of the committee. Anyway, I'll get that. Anyway, we have an advisory committee. Betsy Eigelhart will probably also participate and she was a part of the original group. Um, they will make the recommendations to the historical commission and then a final announcement would be made later in the spring. Again, um, the forms for the uh, preservation awards are available on our website. Uh, and I, I really urge you folks to think of people. We are really trying to uh, promote historic preservation and a, an appreciation for Concord history, um, at, the work that you do, the work the Historical Commission does. So if you um, can think of folks, please do. Um, I don't know if I'm still there. I'm looking at, oh, thank you. These are the, this is the document. Thank you, Haley. <laughs> um, pretty simple to fill out. So that, that's really why I'm here. I'm just, I'm just uh, proselytizing on behalf of my, of our preservation awards. So if there's any questions, <clears throat> I'll answer, but otherwise, thank you. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Um, oh, oh, well, I, can I, I would like to just one other thing. You, you asked for public comment. I was just thrilled to see the little house, the little red house, or had a little red structure that they are going to try and preserve that. I lived around the corner from there for 30 years and uh, drove by that house. That's one of the oldest homes in Concord. And so I was thrilled to see that they're not asking you to tear it down or asking us to tear it down. Instead, they're going to renovate it and use it. So that was a plug. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. If any members of the commission have any questions for uh, Melissa, I think that uh, for those that are not familiar with it, uh, the forum is very straightforward. And what we have done in the past is that we have asked uh, our town planner or our assistant, uh, which is Haley or Anne, to give us a list of every single project that uh, we approved uh, during the period of interest, which in this case would be 2019 to 2022. And then we review each one of them. And then in one of our meetings, we come to a consensus of uh, which one uh, it's uh, worth uh, receiving a preservation award. And then we write a small note with the application that highlights uh, our reasons for obtaining that preservation award. If I remember, uh, one of the structures that was approved was uh, what used to be the Hawthorne Inn in yep. the corner of Lexington and uh, Hawthorne Lane. And there are a few more that I don't remember right now, but uh, they were all very nice and uh, very worthwhile structures. Yeah, actually, the all, all the past recipients are on our website, if you're interested. Um, there are a number of architects, similar architects. We'd really like to see a, a, a sort of a wider array, too, if you can think of that. And um, the other, uh, well, one of the big awards, which is rarely offered is a kind of a lifetime preservation award. The last person to receive that was um, Jane Gordon, who some of you know well, who was kind of the unofficial historian of Concord. So I'm not sure that that position will be filled this time around as a pretty prestigious um, award. Okay, any, any other questions? <laughs> I would just I would just point out that I'll, if these discussions happen before the end of my term, I would obviously recuse myself they, from. No, they won't. They won't because the oh. um, it, 
the the deadline to get these in are February 28th. And my okay. understanding from you is that you're gonna... out as of January. Right. Okay, good. Thank you. And it's a net a net bagley. <laughs> it's a net bagley who's the other person. Thank you. Got it. Just for the record. Sorry, I, I drew a blank too. I was like, yeah, who is that? Yeah, well, I'm older. Than, I'm sure I'm older than you are. So I have an excuse. <laughs> You're not older. Oh, I think I am. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe a little. Okay, well, thank you, Melissa. Okay. okay, well, thanks for coming by, Melissa. Thank Always you. a pleasure. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to item three of the discussion of the, the uh, other business, which is discussions of section two three of the HDC guidelines for administration. And uh, I will try to fill in, uh, fill everybody in about what is this all about. And uh, I'll be as brief as possible. Uh, as you know, our commission is uh, composed of uh, ten, five associate members and five full members. And uh, according to the enabling legislation, the full members are appointed from a individuals proposed by five different entities, which are the public library, the museum, the natural resources commission, the planning board, and the select board. The select board appoints these individuals directly while the other boards propose to. Uh, there's also a whole paragraph of how to approve, how to uh, uh, appoint associate members. And the language is a little confusing because it's not very clear uh, uh, how, how it goes and whether each entity uh, proposes to people, but then the, the commission can choose from all the candidates propose separately from the entity. But what has been going on from before is that uh, when there's a, a vacancy in the commission, uh, that vacancy occurs at the associate level. And then we ask uh, the five nominating entities or the corresponding nominating entity to propose a candidate or two. And then uh, we recommend that candidate and the select board is actually the one who appoints it. One of the problems that occurs is that uh, keeping in mind that each one of the terms of the commission, which is five years as an associate and five years as a full members, in, historically, those terms have been actually quite long. And uh, that forces people to have to resign the, uh, their uh, appointment uh, at any given level, sometimes at the associate level and sometimes at the full member level. So what has happened is that the uh, associate member of the same entity of which the full member resigned is promoted into the position of full member. The consequence of that is that sometimes we have members um, that have very little experience that have been in the commission for as little as one year that suddenly are promoted to full member because uh, the full member of uh, the corresponding entity uh, had to resign or had to leave the commission for whatever reason. So uh, that makes somebody who has been spending less time in the commission be promoted to full member with a, a, a voting uh, a opportunities and so forth. So one of the things that we've been trying to do is to be able to move the uh, um, appointing entity or the recommending entity uh, when somebody um, for any reason needs to fill an empty slot. For example, when a full member resigns and then we have to uh, appoint an associate member and then the obvious person turns out to be not having been uh, uh, suggested by the same entity that uh, the resigning member uh, belonged. So, if we if we were able to switch or to 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 uh, to, to move the affiliations, then the process will be very simple. But if we don't, are, if we are not able to do that, 
then uh, we end up as we ended up uh, sometime last year when we had three members representing the library and uh, uh, no members representing natural resources, some other things. So it's very important that we uh, be able to choose from the associate members, the associate member that is most qualified to fill the position of full member, and then uh, switch the affiliation of the entity uh, in order to keep all the entities represented at the full member level. So uh, Anthony Clifford and I have been working on trying to establish some rules, and then we jumped, we, we bumped into a regulation which is part of the guidelines for administration that were approved by the Historic Districts Commission on August 16 of 2012. Now, the interesting thing about this document is that uh, this is a document of uh, rules that uh, were approved by the commission itself to regulate itself. Uh, this, is, this process is contemplated in actually in the enabling legislation where it says that the commission can establish rules and regulations as they see fit in order to fulfill their purposes. But one of the things that we found uh, in point 2.3, and I would read it verbatim, it says uh, 2.3 member appointments. This is uh, a part of, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong uh, document. <laughs> Well, that's uh, yeah, I was. Sorry, I, I have my own screen here. Uh, it's a, a, a chapter two, a commission administration, a point uh, two point three member appointments. It reads very bad in. A, you have it on the screen, so I won't read the whole thing. But the bottom line is that uh, it says that at the end, when vacancies for unexpired terms occur, the nominating process remains the same. Nominations for full members can include current associate members from the same nominating body, but not from other nominating bodies. And that is the crux of the matter, which is, this is something that we have been violating steadily for, at least for the past two years, we have been violating it left and right, because it has not been possible to keep uh, the same a nominating entity and uh, transfer somebody from associate to full. So what uh, the commission is being asked tonight is that uh, we approve a change in the language. Uh, and uh, uh, that change is as uh, was um, depicted in the um, agenda. Uh, let's see if I can get, here it is. What we want is to change the language uh, such that the last paragraph of section uh, 2.3 says, nominations for full members can include associate members from the same nominating body or from other nominating bodies. Uh, and uh, that's what I'm proposing to you. And I'm willing to explain any other issues that may be associated, and of course, answer any questions you may have. So the floor is open. <laughs> Luis, this does, this does not change at all the, um, the number of years you can serve um, a, a term on the HDC, correct? No, that that that, uh, that is another matter of discussion that I can touch upon today, because it's uh, I I have to meet with Anne again and try to come to 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 an agreement and how are we interpreting it, because uh, there are a number of uh, conflicting uh, recommendations. Some of them come from uh, a, a town government. Uh, some of them come from the tradition of the HDC, and some of them come from the enabling legislation of the HDC. The only thing that we can figure out for sure is that nobody can be uh, that that there are, there are no restrictions. What what it says is that people are appointed for a five year term. That they doesn't say whether that five year term can be repeated 
or can be changed. Although there are, uh, there's language that says that says that uh, at the discretion of the select board, uh, the a person may be reappointed uh, for a short period or so. But this is something that uh, uh, Anne and I had to to sit down and try to figure out exactly at least how we understand it. If, if I can explain that a little bit further, which I try to be as brief as I can be, my personal recommendation has been that uh, we limit, that we ex uh, uh, apply certain limits, and that those limits are that no one can be a member of the commission as an associate member for more than five years, no one can be a member of the commission as a full member for more than five years, that Noel can be a member of the commission for more than 10 years, and that there has to be a period of two years for somebody to, that has served in the commission to be reappointed. Uh, all the members of our commission, which uh, were previous members of the commission, specifically Dennis, all of them have fulfilled that requirement. There's a, another issue, which is that uh, uh, somewhere in the regulation says that, uh, and that's the reason for implementing the five-year rule, et cetera, et cetera, says that when an associate member is promoted to a full member, that associate member, what it's going to do is finish the unfinished term of the full member that retired. And the, the implication is that then he can start, he or she can start a full five member as a full member. <laughs> which makes it uh, a, a little uh, difficult because, you know, potentially somebody could be a full member for nine years, you know? <laughs> so that, that's the reason that that's what, what inspired the rule of five and the rule of 10 and the rule of two. Uh, but again, the main issue at hand right now is the language that we're trying to change. Uh, which is, uh, a, or from other nominating bodies, is uh, from not from other nom nominating bodies. Uh, Paul, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, a couple of things. Um, first of all, what what is the problem we're addressing? In other words. I understand your point, and in fact, we violated the language of Section Two Point Three. Uh, but, but what what's the what's the consequence then that we're too insular, that we're not representing uh, certain constituencies that, in theory, have the right to nominate? What what's what's the bitch? What what is the why is this coming up? Well, the, the problem is that uh, when somebody at the full member level leaves, that person needs to be replaced by an associate member. And uh, it, sometimes there's no associate member uh, affiliated with the, with the entity that the full member left, of the full member that left. Um, you know, we may have some a full member of the public library, but uh, the position as a associate member of the public library may not have been filled. So if the person that represents the, uh, the public library leaves, then there's nobody else from the public library to replace him or her. So we right. have to get somebody from another. Right, but, but, but 2.3 allows us to appoint somebody from outside the board or an associate member. It doesn't mandate that the only pool is existing members, associate members. Well, when we're going to promote the full members, the uh, pool has always been from associate members. In other words, we have never appointed somebody uh, de novo as a full member. Uh, a role that I know that has served in the commission has started as an associate member and then has been promoted to a full member. And that makes uh, certain sense. Right, okay, I understand what you're saying. Um, does, do, do these constituencies, for example, I'm actually the natural resources nominee. I'm not sure they know it. And other than <laughs> my remembering it, I'm not sure I would know it. I mean, I, I, there's no nexus between 
the functionality of a member and the sponsoring entity is there what what am i missing there what have i missed you are you are not missing anything you see you are just reflecting the reality of the situation but uh, the other part of the reality is that there's an enabling legislation which spells out very clearly that the nominating that that the uh, yeah. members of the uh, commission comes from nominees from five entities as described Okay. And, you know, I am appointed by the planning board, and I'm sure the planning board doesn't know that either. On the other hand, uh, both the library and the museum have been vocal in uh, uh, wanting to continue their participation in the nominating process. Right, I understand. Okay, one final, not to, not to hog the microphone here, but if you were going to change the language, um, you, would, you would just stop, I think. At nominations for full members may include or can include current associate members. Period. You don't. You don't need to stay from the same nominating body. Do you? you well, what you mean is anybody could be. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. I've been trying to stay as close as possible to the current language, uh, so we don't make many changes. But in essence, uh, you are absolutely right. We just want to take people from the associate member pool. Yeah, um, I mean, all, all that sentence means is that we're entitled to take it from, but that language implies that a full member theoretically wouldn't have to have been an associate member. I know the practice is otherwise, but am I correct? Well, the, the language implies that you could appoint somebody directly to full membership. Yeah. That has never happened. Yeah, okay. And and the other the other issue uh, with the language is that the language promotes the idea that uh, an associate member of one entity gets promoted to an associate member of the same entity for the purpose of continuity, you know. And especially with the library and the uh, museum, um, you know, I know that I uh, had a conversation with uh, with the library. And eventually, was I was appointed by the planning board, uh, so I I was encouraged by the fact that actually somebody was paying attention to who, who was I before I joined the commission. <laughs> but uh, that only has happened with the library and uh, the museum, and actually, the library has expressed interest in nominating members. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that's basically the reason for just changing that uh, few words in the language, just to keep things as much as possible as they are, except to have that flexibility. Well, so remind me, uh, do who votes? Uh, who votes on the change? It's it's an HDC well, issue. Well, you know, Does that mean the permanent members. Uh, the, the full members are the ones who vote on this very change. See, the way that I'm interpreting it, but I will ask uh, you and Abby to confirm that my interpretation is uh, correct. You see, I see membership in the commission as a, a, a characteristic that all of us have, separate from being associate or full members. So I consider myself a member of the Historic District Commission regardless of whether I am an associate or a fool, because I believe that my role as a member of the, of the Historic District Commission is to participate in a number of activities such as discussions and express my opinion and uh, express uh, my curiosity about certain things or ask questions. Now, there's one aspect of those many activities of being in the Historic District Commission, which is to vote. And that vote is uh, uh, restricted to five individuals that are named full members, but that's the only part where a member of the commission does not participate. And in fact, that, that role is very fluid because uh, uh, when a full member is absent, then an associate member takes its place and uh, a vote uh, takes, uh, they occurs as, it's, uh, as planned. Now, this change, I interpret that it's coming from uh, the fact that we all belong to the commission. So 
I believe that we all should vote about this and, uh, and we should approve this by a majority vote of all the members of the commission, whether they are full or associates. That's my take. My suggestion would be that you have two votes, one only of permanent members in case we're wrong and one of the entire commission and hopefully the results the same, in which event there's no legal, it, does, it doesn't matter. We've, we've, we've uh, neutralized any argument that somebody's not a legitimate member. Well, so if you, looking at the guidelines under Commission Administration 2.1, says the commission is authorized by the act to make rules and regulations as needed. The rules should provide the commission guidance, delineate common procedures and incur consistency in administration. These rules can be made and modified by vote of the commission at any time. Right, but what vote? And look at the next sentence in 2.2, you know, only only the five permanent members. Well, the vote. commission commis consists of 10 members appointed. Yeah. So if if the previous section says the rules can be made and modified by vote of the commission and says the commission consists of 10 members appointed as defined in the act by five nominating bodies, I would say that in terms of when it references the commission, um, that it's all 10. Yeah, I mean, that would be that would be my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that, that. But we're we're illustrating this discussion's illustrating the problem. So maybe maybe this is a moot point because we'd get the same result both ways. So, but Louis, my suggestion is if if this is a serious issue and you want to do it, uh, we should delay this at least for a meeting and take a look at that language and propose a change because if I were going to change it, I would cut it off at nominations for full in 2.3, next to last line, nominations for full members strike can put may include current associate members, period. Now, I, I tend to agree with Paul that I think I, I have no objection to the, the change in terms of function. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think I think we should perhaps have a more kind of robust discussion and look at how our membership is comprised generally, how we function, how because I think you know we have we have some issues. We have some issues of of you know not attracting new members as we often need. We have a vacancy now. Um, member attendance, member like there's some other issues about commission membership and participation that I think we might need a holistic view at. Um, to kind of look at the totality of the circumstances um, and see if there's, because there may be other changes we want to make. So if we're going to alter the guidelines, um, particularly as it goes to structure and membership, maybe we take a, a broader look and say, okay, this is one change we want to make. Are there any other changes that we want to make? Um, so that instead of doing it piecemeal, we take a, a more holistic view. I know we're running to the end of the year, which makes that difficult, but that would be that would be my suggestion because I think there's probably some other areas that that we could use some tweaking in. Um, the only comment that I make is that yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, there are myriad of places where we can tweak the rules and regulations and so forth, but uh, we are now uh, in a situation which is a little bit of a crisis <laughs> because uh, we are in December, basically, or very close to December. The commission is supposed to uh, switch in January. And um, we're going to have to make some shuffles uh, what, that are going to go against uh, Article 2.3. So that's the reason that I have brought the Article 2.3 uh, to the forefront with a minimal, minimal change in the language such that we can use it uh, as, as a, we can see it as, a, as, a, as an, an atomic change, uh, a change that will allow us to operate um, according to the rules and uh, that will not go against a rule that it's spelled out just like that. That's the only reason for doing that. And of course, uh, we need to look at uh, the rules and regulations in a holistic way. And that's what uh, uh, Anne Clifford and I and some other members of the commission have been doing very intensely for the past two or three months. Uh, and we have gone through a number of things. What we 
have been trying to avoid is changes in the enabling legislation, because that means that we go to the Massachusetts legislature. And I don't think that it's necessary. I think that uh, we can make the commission to work very effectively with just a few tweaks here and there. And as far as commission members is concerned, I am uh, glad uh, to mention, and I see that Anne is there, so she may confirm that or deny it, <laughs> that uh, seems that we have had a number of uh, green cards still uh, and I think that there are at least five or six uh, green cards uh, of uh, members of the concrete community who have expressed that they want to serve in the service commissions as their first choice. And in fact, two of them are former members of the commission, uh, which uh, I think uh, from one perspective may be an asset. Uh, again, I'm not saying that that's what we should promote because I am also very aware that we should not have an ecstatic nation and the same people serving this commission for prolonged periods. But uh, I think that uh, we are addressing that problem. And I expect to, that we will be successful in staffing the commission for next year. But this uh, uh, article, uh, it's not working with us, it's working against us. So, Luis Paul again. Um, when you say it's working against us, what what is the immediate problem? What are you thinking about? Is there any reason not to share with us? No, no, the, no, no. I haven't I haven't seen the 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 roster right now, but I will tell you that uh, we're going to have one resignation from uh, from the full member. Another full member will um, Peter. Uh, finish uh, his term, and uh, uh, in order to make. To, to, in order to fill those two vacancies that we have at the full member level, we're going to have to get somebody from a different nominating entity mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have enough people uh, that can uh, serve as a full members. You know, potentially we would have to have somebody appointed the novo into full membership. So, Paul, the so Peter. Peter's term expires and he's nominated by the library. The second library position is vacant currently. So those, exactly. would, those would both be up. And then my original five-year term was set to ex expire at the end of this year. Oh. And I was shifted to a different nominating organization, but I'm stepping down at the end of the year at the, at the end of my original five-year term. Um, so and so I was, well. I was shifted um, to the museum in violation of this, essentially. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, in violation. <laughs> so we didn't know that at the time, but that <laughs> my, my shifting to full member under the museum violated this, but I'm stepping down, Kate will step up, but library will both be vacant. And so if we wanna move somebody into that position from who is currently an associate member who has a few years of experience, then we would need to amend this, the commission mm -hmm. structure. Okay. And, the, and the other side of the coin is that if we want to do it according to the rules, we have to take somebody who has never served in the commission and make them full members. Yeah, no, I, I see your point. I, I mean, look, I don't, I don't want to hold this up. I just, I share Abby's sense that when you try and do these kind of things on the fly, um, sometimes it's regrettable. But uh, you know, do we have? When's our next? We, we must have one more meeting at least. We have two more meetings. Uh, one is uh, December 1st or December 2nd, and the other one is December December 1st and uh, December 15th. Okay. Uh, we don't have, uh, we probably, we may have a uh, quorum problems uh, yeah. in those two, two meetings in December. Yeah. Uh, I can, I can, Give you from uh, 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 as a warning, say so, that uh, on both days I have functions uh, that are family functions that I cannot miss. So I will not be there in any of those. Yeah, I've been exploring whether, in a selfish way, the dates can be changed. Uh, but um, that may not be possible. So I don't know. Uh, uh, it's not necessary for me to be there at any rate, but uh, 
We can't, it isn't December 2, right? December 1? December 1. Okay. Uh, well, look. I, Number two I or one? What? What's that? Uh, we, we're trying to figure out when when December it is. I, I don't have any huge objection to uh, this. You know the substance of the change. I would. I would propose that it be a little cleaner and just drop the language after associate members. Well, I think that it's an excellent idea, and I don't have any objections to that. You see, so we can put uh, that that motion uh, uh, on the table, and we can follow the strategy that uh, Paul described before of having uh, the full uh, full members vote, uh, the five full members vote, and then all the members vote. But I but I'd still propose that we wait to the next meeting at least give people a chance to just get the book out and read it. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, that's just my instinct, but I'll, I'll go with the group on this. Well, you know, we can we can do a roll call to see who would think that we should vote on these, and uh, if, you know, I would uh, um, propose that we make a change uh, and that the language read. A nominations for full members can include the current associate members, current associate members, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, if, if people want to vote on this tonight, I'll I'll give you a motion to vote on, but uh, or others can. But uh, again, I th I think it would be wise to kick this over to December one, unless oh. we unless we don't have the body. Um, but are we likely to have more members on the first than we have tonight? Well, I know I won't be there. <laughs> you will not, for sure? I will not be here oh, on December 1st. Okay. okay, okay. All right, well, let me, let me propose a motion and we'll see if it gets seconded. How's that? Okay, go ahead. I move that the HDC amend the guidelines for administration dated August 16, 2012, at section 2.3 entitled Member Appointments. By amending the last two lines to read, quote, Nominations for full members can include current associate members, period, end quote. And therefore deleting the language, quote, from the same nominating body, comma, but not from other nominating bodies, period, end quote. Okay, so do we have a second for that motion? A second it. All right, so I'm gonna make two roll calls for a vote. I'm gonna ask first the full members of the commission to vote uh, with Abigail. Aye. Hen uh, Peter. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Paul. Aye. And uh, I am an I as well. Now I'm gonna ask uh, for a second uh, vote where I am going to include all members of the Historic Districts Commission Starting with uh, Dennis Fury. Aye. Uh, Abigail. Aye. Henry. Aye. Peter. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Paul. Aye. And I'm an I as well. So I thank you for. Um, considering this uh, motion and approving it. And uh, hopefully that will make our job uh, more efficient. Uh, in the same uh, subject, I will share with you some of the proposals that I have uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the time span that should be served by all members of the commission 
and to see if we can address the issue of uh, somebody like Peter. You see, Peter is uh, our valued member, and uh, he's going to serve, he's going to be two years short of a full five and five. Uh, when Dennis left the commission uh, two and a half years ago, he, his term was cut short as well because uh, he was promoted early. So we're trying to fix that as well. So, and now let's go to the last point, which is uh, to uh, have a minutes from 9.15 and 10.6. I look at them and I have no objections to them at all. Any? I just had one one comment, if I may, Mr. Chair. I was not present at the uh, September fifteenth meeting. It just doesn't list me as absent. That, that's my only comment. Okay, uh, Haley, can we make note of that? Yep, I can remove that. Okay, thank you. So I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for October sixth and September fifteenth with the changes mentioned this evening. Second. We'll second them or Melinda? Melinda and Peter second it. Okay, so uh, Henry. You are muted. Aye. Aye. Uh, Abby. Aye. Paul. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Peter. Aye. And I'm an eye. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm um, very, 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 ha very happy Thanksgiving. Can I need I a motion you? to. Uh, sure. No, wait. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, I was a little disturbed by the letter that we were sent that said the select board is actually negotiating with the contractor for the property that we've spent a lot of time talking about. Um, what are we thinking to do about giving us a little bit of empowerment to, uh, which we obviously do not have now, um, or um, something like this where we very specifically came, you know, told them what we expected and were looking for and they ignored us. I'll uh, uh, give you some feedback on that. <laughs> um, that uh, so all of this is still under litigation, so it's really not to be discussed at public meetings. I've been told to speak up, <laughs> so. Okay. Um, but but I can say something uh, that has, that is a general comment. Um, when the issue came up in some other discussion, my only comment was that uh, the commission has a clear mandate of uh, approving applications, and that's what it does. We just look at applications and uh, we approve them or deny them or continue them. Yeah, um, I, th I think the other point probably is, I don't know, I don't know anything about the discussions, but the entity that sued is the town. That's the corporate entity that's the defendant. And so they have the right to make a decision on behalf of the town. And so while that may hurt our feelings or be inconsistent with what we might do as an entity, uh, it's the town that's at risk. And accordingly, the town gets to resolve the problem from a legal perspective. Any other points of information? I would only say that's... Uh... Paul, I, I clearly understand what you're saying, but that doesn't do much for people who want to be recruited for the HTC if they are if they're powerless. And the, when push comes to shove, you really don't have any authority. Well, yeah, I mean, it's you know there there can be a long discussion about that. I'm sure the town would say, look, we, we've taken a host of interest into consideration, and including the expense and the prolonged nature of litigation, blah blah blah. You've heard it all before in other contexts. So you're 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 right. You're right. But um, I think the town probably has to take a broader look. You know, uh, they have a ten thousand foot view. We have a ten foot view. 
Yeah, uh, I think what's made this more com uh, complicated. And so we're really not supposed to be discussing any of this um, while it's under litigation and for your own safety. Well, we don't know anything, so we're discussing it uh, obliquely. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't think this is. Just, just, <laughs> I I would echo Anne's comments that while this is under litigation, this should not be discussed at a public hearing. All right. Um, well, I don't think that the, the letter uh, was a, a privileged information. The letter was a public letter sent to everybody who wanted to read it. And that's the reason that it came up uh, in public. And that's the reason that my comment was that the role of the commission is to hear applications and uh, consider them and come to uh, an agreement where they get approved, rejected, or continued. And if the commission wishes to discuss it, we, at a future meeting, you can always um, send a request for executive session. So. Exactly. Yeah. So if somebody wants to do that, I, I know that Haley and Ann can help them with that process so that it's noticed appropriately. And actually, I encourage everybody to follow the process and take advantage of the process. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy oh, we need a motion. Thank you. So I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> um, Henry. I have, I, yes. <laughs> Abby. <Hi. laughs> Paul. Hi. Dennis. Melinda. Uh, Peter. I left 15 minutes ago. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Well, ha happy Good Thanksgiving. Day. Don't, don't eat holiday. too much. Read, read the Art Buckwald uh, uh, story of Thanksgiving. It's called Le Jour, Le Jour de Merci Donant. It was published in 1995, and it's very, very good. I read it every Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.